As you know, one of the problems I encountered uh, on my first attempt was that the billet stuck to the steel and ruined the whole thing. And I knew that was likely to happen because I didn't, I hadn't received what I needed in order to make a compound that would prevent the sticking. But now I have, I've got some uh, uh, red iron oxide, or you can use yellow ochre. And I'm going to make a solution a paste, shall we say, that I'm going to paint onto the now clearly I've no idea what I'm doing, which I think is a condition that you're all used to by now. Um, I'm going to add a little bit of distilled water. As that stands right now it won't actually stick to anything so what I'm going to do is add a little bit of glue which as you can already see inside the pot Okay, I mean, this is, I'm completely trying this out. I mean, I've, I've no idea if I'm doing it right in the right proportions. Anyway, that should be dry by the time I've cleaned up all the billet. The washing process or the cleaning process of the billet is gonna be exactly the same as last time. Um, because it clearly worked reasonably well. So I'm going to wash them in distilled water, rinse in distilled water, and then I'm going to put them um, uh, in some dry cleaning solution. So this attempt was even more of a disaster than the last one, apart from one obvious thing, which is that the iron oxide worked in terms of preventing sticking. But this time, for some reason, and I don't think I was at a very different temperature, the brass melted. Not the copper, but the brass did. And I don't understand why that happened, and it didn't happen last time. Um, and I'm sure I was at the same temperature. Anyway, back to the drawing board, back to preparing the next billet, back to re-preparing these guys, and there's no time like the present. Okay, I'm hoping for some potential success here. I don't know how well you can see The billet but that looks pretty good to me I hope <laughs> it's very difficult to tell So what I'm going to do is I'm going to clean this up. I'm going to saw into it and that'll give me a better idea.
Okay, well that's looking pretty good to me. Um, obviously there's one bad well down here uh, and I'm interested to know why that happened. But so far it looks like I've got me some Akumigani. And uh, yeah. So I confess I'm, I'm, I'm quite chuffed. My third attempt, um, that is definitely a billet of Makumigani. Um, I hope it shows up the, the, the difference between the, the copper and the brass. It's very hard for me to focus this thing. Um, and now the next stage is I'm going to see if I can hammer it out a bit. I, I don't have a, a, a rolling machine, a rolling mill. I, I can't afford one at the moment. Um, so I'm going to do this with a hammer and see what I can do. So that's going to be quite nerve wracking because of course everything might fall apart. But let's try. As you can see, I've reduced the thickness quite comprehensively. So I'm sorry I didn't film all of the hammering and, and everything, but um, I was dealing with thunderstorms and I had to run to the anvil, then run back in, etc. Um, so this is where I'm at at the moment. As you can see, there's, a, there's some delamination here. This obviously sheet of brass has got extremely thin. Um, and I fear that some of these holes I punched a bit deep. I didn't want to hammer it too much more. It's fairly even. And to give you an idea, I started with a billet that was about, uh, I think it was nine millimeters thick. And now we are looking at two and a half millimeters thick. So obviously now it doesn't look like much. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to square it up, try and clean it up a bit, and then we'll see what we've got. Okay, so this has been a very quick clean up, um, just to make sure the, laminate, the welding was good all the way around. And obviously here there's some hammer marks and stuff which I've got to deal with. But on this side, I'll do the rest with some um, sandpaper. But hopefully you can already see the brass showing through there. Um, so um, I'm going to do the rest by hand. So I've done my best and uh, I could probably do a little bit more but as you can see there are some hammer marks that are really quite deep um, but I hope you can still see the Makumigani um, and I'm going to now try something which is making me a little bit nervous but I'm going to try and make the copper stand out a bit. happens just like that. Well thanks so much for staying with me on this journey. 
as you can tell it was quite an enterprise but it's really satisfying and you know I'm going to be kind to myself this was my first attempt um, and I am pleased with it I, I need to learn how to improve the patterns on it and I'd like to experiment with more materials than maybe just brass and copper um, it's a very satisfying thing to make when it works it's tricky but hopefully this video will have given you some ideas of what can go wrong and what needs to be done and by the way if there's a really irritating noise in the background it's because it's pouring with rain at the moment anyway um, I hope you enjoyed it please leave comments please like if you did enjoy it and of course please subscribe and next you'll see what I'm going to do with this uh, billet and um, I'm going to make something for my wife but don't tell her she doesn't know okay thanks very much bye mm -hmm.